Hey guys, it's Jen with the Nifty Thrifty Lady and today I wanted to talk to you about why it's important to give no matter what your income is. And I have a challenge for you. One of the things that I am asked on a quite frequent basis is should I be giving if I can't meet my bills? Should I be giving if I'm barely paying my bills? Should I be making giving of any type a priority? And my answer to the this question is most of the times, yes, you should be giving. Now, sometimes if you are not being able to pay your bills, I don't recommend financially giving. I recommend giving of your time or your talents. But if you are breaking even every single month, um, I always suggest that you find something to cut so you can give a little bit. Traditional tithing, um, biblically based, is giving 10% of your income to the church or to an organization that you support, that you want your money to go to, and that benefits somebody else. We try to give 10% when we can, but if we can't, we don't. However, we make it a priority to always give something every month. Why do I feel that it's important to give? Well, there are a couple of different things. One is that it is biblically based, and as Christians, we should be giving back the money that God has provided for us in some form or fashion. Number two, I feel that when you are giving, it takes money into a whole new perspective. A lot of times, people want to make money, so that way they can spend, 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 or save, save, save for themselves. But when you get your mind wrapped around the idea, the bigger picture, that you can help somebody with your money, I think it takes your money mindset and brings it up a level. Another reason that I think it's really important to give is that you are blessed by giving. You may not be blessed financially, but your heart becomes fuller and it makes you a better person. Why do I think it's important to give even when you have very little money? It's a habit. When you start that habit, no matter if you have $1 to give, $1,000 to give, or $1 million to give, if you start that habit when you only have $1, when you have $1 million, it is not going to be a problem. Giving is a passion of mine. We don't always have a lot of money to give, but I always find a way to give with my time or my talent. One of the things that I want to instill in my children is a heart of giving. So every year we do the Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. This has been a challenge that I have created at the Nifty Thrifty Lady since 2011, and this year we are doing it again. If you've never seen a shoe box, um, these are the uh, already put together shoe boxes that come from a Samaritan's Purse. I don't usually get these, but our church is doing them again this year and I got my hands on two. So I'm excited that we will be filling our shoe boxes and not just donating our items in a um, random shoe box. So Operation Christmas Child is a amazing organization. Um, it's created by Samaritan's Purse and the object is to fill shoe boxes um, gender specific and age specific, specific so that they can go into other parts of the world and these children can have a present. The challenge that I like to create for my Nifty Thrifty Lady readers is that you fill this not just with you know items you go to the store and buy but personal items that maybe you found at a discount. Um, I think it's really cool to be able to save on the things that you are giving when you can, especially if you don't have a lot of money, and you'll see that it is possible to give no matter what your budget. I also have a group of other bloggers that is going to be doing a challenge of filling the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes, so you can check out that link as well. Uh, these are not ladies that are going to be doing on a budget, all of them, but they're all ladies that are thrilled to be doing a shoebox for kids. Remember, these are going into different countries, so there are items that we may think is okay to put in these boxes, but may not be okay with their culture. So definitely read up on those directions. 
sometimes little things that we may not think of are a really big deal to different countries and cultures um, and environment. So take a minute and read over their what not to pack list um, and then read over their what to pack list. Another thing that I think is really encouraging is to send a personalized picture or note. I always have my children um, do something personalized and then we stick a picture of our family in there and just um, writing Merry Christmas and that we are thinking and praying for them. Something else that you can do for your box, and some locations don't have you do it because they will cover the cost, but you can donate $7 to help with the shipping cost and fees associated with getting the boxes to the kids. Um, gift suggestions that are pretty typical to find in the boxes are stuffed animals, soccer balls, craft supplies, school supplies, and things like that. They suggest having one really big, fun, cool item, but I really honestly believe these children are completely grateful and feel blessed no matter what you put in your box. So don't let the big old instructions scare you and think, oh, I don't wanna donate. Just know that they're going to be thankful as long as you're not giving them something on that do not send list. If you want to do this challenge with me, you can let me know in the comments below, but hop on over to the nifty50lady.com. The link will be down in the comments section as well, where you can find different items that you can always find on sale or on the discount that can go on these boxes that the kids will love. So remember guys, it's really good to give. It doesn't matter your income. It doesn't have to be money, but make sure you're doing it. And I hope that you'll take this challenge.